I knew that it had to be a big earthquake. Is this a dream? Like this is my first week back to the States from deployment. I called the public affairs officer at Caltech and she tells me the media is already outside. They're lined up. We, we need to get things in place ASAP. I was in the Dominican Republic actually teaching a seminar about earthquake hazards to Dominican geologists and engineers. My wife and I were eating dinner and we dropped covered and held on. My first reaction was, wow, this earthquake is going on a really long time. <laughs> There was a smaller earthquake, a 6.4, which turned out to be the foreshock. And the next day, there was a 7.1. And I was actually at the office getting ready to respond to the 6.4 when the 7.1 occurred. As those earthquakes decay over time, we want to collect as much information just moments right after the big earthquake. And that means getting people out to the field. After the 6.4, I knew that I'd be involved in responding. And I went with Janice Hernandez. We met up early on with Kelly Blake. And together we made the first uh, geological confirmation that that was indeed surface fault rupture from the 6.4. The next day, Janice and I went by helicopter as well and got a big picture overview of the surface rupture. And then we reported to the Navy and later to the city of Ridgecrest. All of that happened before the 7.1. So we were able to provide some really important situational awareness there. We blanketed the area with a large number of seismographs, which gives us unprecedented detail uh, about what's happening with the fault as far as the aftershocks are concerned. The most memorable experience was certainly the heat. It was over 105 degrees out there most of the days we were in the field. Probably the most memorable thing is the heat. It was 110 to 120 degrees and we were out there all day. <laughs> and that was pretty significant. You know, Lucy Jones was great and Rob Graves were great about helping, you know, dog sit while we wrangled media. I've never before and probably never will again have an opportunity to brief the Vice President of the United States of America. All of these different agencies that you would not necessarily see working together, working together. So seeing the USGS, the Navy, the state, Caltech, some of the, more, um, some of the other academics coming together, working toward the same goal and really learning the culture and learning the terminology and the lingo and everyone just kind of sharing and you know, cross-sharing, that was the most memorable part. Don't assume that everything that's forthcoming is an aftershock. Perhaps that large earthquake you just had is a foreshock. So be prepared and uh, act accordingly. If you can do one thing this week to be more prepared for an earthquake, you'll be better for it. The fact that we continue to develop these new tools for our earth earthquake risk reduction toolbox demonstrates the commitment of the USGS to really helping people survive earthquakes. There can be a tendency in areas that are experiencing a lot of aftershocks to say, ah, I've done that drop cover hold on so many times, but you never know whether it is going to develop into a larger one. So secure your space. You can use Velcro and other ways of fastening things and then also drop cover hold on. But there's a longer list of protective actions that you can take. It's called the seven steps to earthquake safety.